and fall in my fellow scout troopers to a Napoleon Total War 3 4v4 battle replay today at the Flanders 8 map. The last replay comes from Anzac Warspike, his allies are Fun Balls, Templar Valentin and Latour. The other team is HU Bourbon, Osti, Renford, or Renford, Renard, I think it was a 4, it's meant to be an A, I don't know, and uh, Remf Holt, that's RMF Holt. Now, if you guys want to see your own Napoleon replay featured here on this channel, or any other Total War replay in general, including mods, you can send them to my email at scoutsofentertainment at gmail.com, you can post them to me via private message on Discord, join my Discord server Scouts Reconnaissance and post it there, or tag me in Napoleon Total War 3 replay you post on the Napoleon Total War Discord as well. And with that, let's have a look at the map today. We got about four one pointers on the field today, make that five and two four pointers. Okay, so that's about roughly 13 points. And the blue team's already captured one point ahead of us today. We got here Ryburn in front of us, it's the first of the blue team factions. Over here we have France, 1798, the Orient. We've also got Wartenberg, which I can't really show on the screen there, I don't think. And over here we have the final player, Elb. Now Elb is a very, very hard faction to use. They have a score of three. So, um, yeah, Elb here is going to need a lot of support. Oh, he's going to break like a toothpick. First of the red team factions today is Austria, 1809. We must have Mamalik over here. We've got Russia, 1812, the I don't know how to say that one. Um, Gvidia, maybe. Don't see anything else. Oh, over here we've got Prussia, 1813 to 1815. So it looks like a lot of points went into the other the other factions, maybe France and Ryben in particular. Wardenberg and Elbe especially is on the low side. Elbe is definitely the lowest. I don't think I've seen a faction on the plane in Total War 3 that was lower than three points. So yes, I wonder why they had to do that. I guess they were just that's what they were restricted to. Interesting to see how this battle unfolds today, I reckon. Wardenberg has a ton of cavalry moving up here. They're guarding an artillery piece, makes sense. But there's a hell of an escort, I've got to say. A six pounder, obviously on the ponies, that's why it's moving so fast. They're going to um, position themselves next to this one pointer. We're trying to get to it before pressure gets there, but pressure just has to come through this direction here. There's cover, using the buildings as cover, and the artillery can't touch them if they come from that direction. But pressure's already obviously there. They've got an advance guard protecting the town. And the pressure, I think, definitely has the better cavalry and, and easily outmatches Wardenberg. Wardenberg is in over his head here. He probably shouldn't deploy. It's a bit of a gamble. If he deploys, he's going to lose probably all his cavalry and his artillery. So, seeing this, I think it's time to fall back, mate. Get out of there. Now if you do enjoy the content and want to help me get seen amongst the YouTube ranks, make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe of course if you haven't already, tick the bell for notifications, and leave your own thoughts about this battle in the comment section below. I do enjoy reading all the comments, and have a laugh at some of the negative ones. So these guys here are moving up. Warburg is retreating to the safety of his infantry. France is sending over some support, that's good foresight there from France. Malik might be charging Elb here. I don't think Elb should be moving off the high ground. He's probably going to stick to that high ground and um, hug it like his life depends on it. Ryben probably needs to get over here. He has to move around that forest. It's going to take him way too long if he goes straight through the forest. It's going to really slow him down. Cavalry isn't too far away. Now, Malik is a cavalry based faction. So, Ryben can probably take him on to a degree. I don't know if Robin has enough cavalry though to beat him outright. Because Malik can definitely surround him and swarm him and try to break the morale of his troops that way. Head to head, I don't think Malik can win, but if Malik's able to swarm and attack him from all sides, all directions, I think there will be enough pressure to break all of Ryburn's cavalry, so. You know, Ryburn can't Ryburn can't really be he can't really let Malik to force his hand, is what I'm trying to say. He's got to keep himself, I suppose, reserved for now. A cavalry unit charging forward here. We've got some hussars from Robin. What's he thinking? He could be going after the Elbe artillery. There is some cavalry protecting it. I don't really have too much hope that he'll be able to beat Marmalik. Yeah, he's going for the arty. 
And no one is setting up support. No, hang on. I've just shifted. Now, you got to hate it when this happens, but on occasion, guys, if you're being charged, sometimes your unit will just um, leave a rear guard to sort of absorb that charge. But it can't anchor that whole unit and get, get it broken, as we just saw then. So I've got the Hisashi that could charge Malik and outflank him. Now, Ryber probably missed out on a big opportunity there. He probably should have charged these two in. At the same time, charged his third unit and straight into their left flank. Potentially, could have routed these two units by the time his third, fourth, and fifth one maybe even arrived. Now, I don't think the infantry is too far away here from Ryben. The Ryben's going to engage. Okay, this is a big gamble. We've got troops coming around. Ryben's trying to outflank Mama, trying to break his forces, but he's getting outflanked himself. Now we have some Gidamiri. Can they hold their own? That's the question. Ryben's infantry is probably too far away to help at this time. Ryben's hanging on by a thread. Here come the camels of Mamluk. Now this might slow Ryben's progress. He's got to keep an his eye out for that cavalry of Mamluk. I think Elb here could be in a bit of strife. What's he got here? He got some escort on Napoleon. The general here's got two cab units. This Arty is trying to shift. It's in a bit of trouble. Elb here needs to redeploy some infantry. He's got to do something. He can't really afford to run away. He's got to stay in fight. Ah oh man, Arty shot too high. See an attack here to the north as well. Okay, Robin's sending over some more cav. We got here some Prince Clemens. What can they do? They better do something. He's just running past. There you go. That's better. He's trying to outthink him. More directly. Okay, they gotta combine their forces, they gotta shift, they gotta push hard here. They can't run away. They're too close to you, mate. They're too close. To... Oh, they should stay and fight. In melee combat, I would favor Ryben of Marmalik any day. Especially a head-on attack like that. As long as Marmalik can't outflank him, I think Ryben's in good steads. Yeah, LP is going to get his troops back in the battle. He's probably afraid of being shot by his own troops, but he can easily run these guys around if he's that well concerned about it. Looks like he's trying to do that right now, but he's walking. Oh no, he's running. He guess he, he can't do much. Oh, now they're walking, I don't know what they're doing. But Ryben needed his help here, for sure. Our men are running, sir. Yeah, see? Infantry still on the march. Elvis General here could be killed. He's escort on. He's got to get into the battle. All right, lucky break here for Elb. Most of the troops here broke. Yeah, Elb's got to press his advantage. He's got to kill as many as he can. These guys will reform if he doesn't kill them. Russia has yet to engage Wartenberg to the north. Or to the west, actually, I should say. Alright. L boys have done alright. Things are looking a bit dire for them there, but they managed to bring it around. These skirmishes probably can't catch that cavalry. Robert's probably all fresh out here. He's not out of the woods yet. We've got some camels here that are still sort of hovering around. They're very tired. Prussia's here. Okay, Prussia charging their cab. 
The general here is about to be killed if he doesn't move it. And here comes more cavalry here for Marduk. It's a camel swarm. Yep, <laughs> it's a real camel swarm. I thought maybe it was just because it was in the distance here, but we got an army of camels here. We've got the French camels, we've got the Marmalade camels. Now the French boys should be able to beat the Marmalade boys, you have to think. See, she's got like six units of these camels. They're walking, they're not running. Why aren't they charging into these guys? They're in range now. I guess Malik's having some micro issues. Jeez. Come on, Malik. Wake up, mate. Wake up. We're too good for you in a second, man. Oh. Unlucky. Hopefully he saves him. Our men are running, sir. Okay, France has managed to beat back that calf. Price is charging in here. Prussia is doing what I thought that Malik was going to attempt to do. These boys here can't form square. That was a solid charge. Bringing up the heavy cab behind them. Using these light tier cabs as smoke screen. Very smart. Take the brunt of any potential enemy fire. Got some mid tier cab charging in now as well. Now France might lose his front line here, but his backup line is set and ready to go. The only downside is if they fire, they're probably going to get a little friendly fire too. No, they're just sort of hovering around, just within their perimeter. But a lot of their own forces, a lot of the France's own troops are unfortunately in the way and absorbing some of that fire that they're trying to, well, as they're trying to kill the Prussian Cav. Wartenberg is being outflanked, so he charged too far ahead. His men here come from the square. This unit needs to pivot, face this direction, and start firing into the cavalry as best he can. That didn't work out too well for the Wartenberg unit. Some artillery there, fired directly in line with that unit, taking out a nice chunk of their ranks. Alright, fortunately there, they're broken. So Wartenberg has time to reform. I've got to say, I am impressed that Elb is still in the fight. I did not give him too much hope when uh, Marmalek mounted that massive attack. Ryburn's coming. But El can't afford to go to sleep just yet. He's got Marmot behind his rear. His general potentially could be killed. If his general's gone, this you know, this whole army here might be as well written off. I mean, they already have low morale as it is. With the general gone, they'll probably break at the mere sight of the enemy. Not the player's fault, that's just how weak I think Elb is. Looks like we're seeing the full might of Russia now finally come into view. Ryburn's really had to march a long way here. We've got, uh, little, got little chunks of uh, Marmalade Cads hovering around in, in different places. The advantage of this is it really keeps the blue team on their toes. They don't know when Marmalade will reappear again with a sudden unit. And Austria's brave. He's charged straight into the French camels. He's managed to catch him too. The camels are actually faster, or meant to be faster at least. I think. Okay, Austria turned around for some reason. Now, uh, Malik and Austria here got to work together. Now, they're working together. The Austrians turned around again.
And you can see the red team has formed up their line perfectly and awaiting the blue team. The struggle for the blue team, I think, is that town. Francis here is broken. I think that the Chasseur is charging in, potentially trying to hold the Austrian and Mamak unit in place while Wartenberg outflanked them with this unit here that's maybe already trained on them. But it's just, uh, there you go. Now they're opening up. They probably will just get away. Okay, Prussia's moving up. Russia a little slow on the uptake. Gap there is emerging. Ooh, a few little pot shots there from Warnberg, just sort of poking the bear, as it were. Okay. I don't know what's going on. France and Warnberg just sort of falling back for now. Potentially waiting for Ryburn to arrive. Wardenberg's going to fall these guys back. He's going to get caught out here by Austria for sure. Potentially Wartenberg is sending out reinforcements to help Elb and Ryben, but Elb and Ryben have got to move off that hill, I reckon. I know I said Elb needs to stand on the hill and hug it for dear life, but I think now that Ryben's arrived, the danger is mostly over for Elb. He's got Ryben's support right by his side. These guys need to move down and probably potentially outflank Austria as he charges and tries to chase and track down the Wartenberg, Wartenberg units here. These guys here can't afford to go up against Austria alone. They'll get annihilated for sure. We've got a French unit here that was left behind by accident. What are they thinking here? This town's going to make things a bit complicated for them. These trees here also make it difficult to fall back as well. If they engage the enemy here, they've got some space to run back, some time to run away, but if they try to fight here next to the town, next to the trees, and try to fall back, then it's going to be super slow as they retreat, and they'll just buy them more time for the enemy to shoot them in the back. This probably isn't the best fallback position. Honestly, I'd probably like to see France and Wurmberg move immediately to this direction towards Ryben and Elbe and set up their line maybe from this building here all the way across to where Ryben is. That way their units are sort of curved around the enemy like a hook and potentially Elbe and Ryben sort of enclose on Austria try to outflank them at the same time Wartenberg and Ryben's units probably in this vicinity here moves forward and if Austria falls back, that just makes it buys more time for Ryben and Wormberg to shoot them in the back as they retreat. Now, I potentially think a trap could be set here for Austria. That would allow the blue to turn the red team's flank entirely and force the whole line back. But I think the battle needs to be fought here for them to actually have a better field position and gain an advantage over their enemy. The, building here, the buildings here and the trees make it very difficult for the red team to outflank them on the right, for sure. And there's virtually no chance of them outflanking them on the left because, you know, Elven Ripon already had that area covered. And so... It looks like the battle is slowly taking shape. Austria is continuing to march forward here. This is only good news, I reckon, for the blue team. Elba is not moving forward for some reason. He seems to be acting as a rear guard. Well, Robin should be should do all right. Got the artillery I'm supposed to worry about. That's uh, six cannons there. That's three ten pounders there, and some howitzers as well. Not too bad. Yeah, you know, Austria's out position. He's realised that. If I was Ryburn, I'd probably start running my left flank a little bit. Just so that they can get firing on the Austrians before they're in position. But they need some cavalry as well so they can charge the Austrian artillery. Oh, 
kind of targeting Elbs General here. He's going to lose it any second if he doesn't pull out. We've got some... Oh no, this is infantry. Okay, that was cavalry. Yeah, I think Robin's just got to get in there. If he can get in there, he can probably use the Austrian units as a screen. To protect him against the artillery to some degree. It would certainly allow him to get closer. Without fear of cancer shot. If I was cancer shot, it's going to take out their own troops. This galley, I think, would act as a great natural defense for Robin. Thirty minutes left on the clock here. Must be an eighty-minute battle. Eighty-minute battles tend to be the, the new norm, I reckon, for a lot of players. Just because it allows them more time to sort of get themselves into a better position, they're more comfortable with. They feel less rushed. And therefore, we'll see less. We'll see fewer hasty decisions that could cause a cataclysmic error that leads to a defeat. Now, both teams have had a lot of time to think about how they're going to approach this battle before it actually began. Now, you'll see, we've got a red team unit to the east. Is that a cab unit? Yep, Marmalek reappears again. There was definitely Elvis General there that was killed. No doubt. Elvis finally sending out some troops. Now, hopefully, that Elb artillery there is trying to find the Austrians. I think it is. Warnberg sent out some more troops. We're trying to go into the city here. Oh, the town, I should say. France is in the tree line. Okay, Doug. Our men are running, sir. Crush has brought up their 12 panda. You say Russia here won the calf fight. Uh -huh. I can't tell. Are they broken? No, they're running. They want to try and get their cabin to that artillery, no doubt. I thought something like this was sort of frowned upon to some degree. Jeez. That came from the French. Nice hits. Whoa! That was a nice slap back. Okay. Russia was repelled from the town after their first attempt. Wardenberg and Ryben appear to have driven back the Austrians for now. Oh, not good. Second blue team general for Anzac. Warspice general here was just killed by Narmalik. Narmalik became the silent assassin of this battle. And his general here is still alive. Just. This infantry probably should march forward. I know it's L. Maybe they should try and go for the Artie. There's a unit right in their way right now. Could be time for them to strike. Okay, red team's falling back for now. Alright, they attack the Artie. 
He is down to seven troops and still intact. Not bad. Bloody unfortunate for France. We have killed their generals. Now they must break. Okay, there's a Mamlex general here was finally defeated by Wartenberg. He's got some uh, Chevalixka. Oh, good hit. Robin's going to turn this unit here to the left. That was going to break soon. Oh, he's already got one unit ready. Elba, unfortunately, is right in the way. Well, unit yeah, then. Four units are going to try and shoot Robin in the back. Our men are running. And Zach's got a unit formed up here. Wurmberg's trying to help. Against Ryben's better judgment, he probably has to actually move forward. Going back would be devastating for him. That Arty is just too close to his army. By moving back, it makes it easier for the Arty to get a bead on his, all his troops here. By moving forward, he's got some cover at least. With the Austrian troops in front of him. He's going to fall back. I think that's a mistake. Going only goes for so long, the level's out here. Bit of a gamble, Wartenberg really sticking his neck out here. France is also advancing on Prussia. Where is Elb? Elb has got to kick in the high gear here. Austrians have some dragoons standing by. That's probably why he hasn't moved forward. He's just too afraid of the cavalry. Our men are running. His Marmalek is just harassing Ryben now. Something the swordsman, the swordsman, Ryan Bird's troops. He's a loser. The swords are skewering forward. And then they break. Ryben, I think, was saved by Wartenberg just now. He's managed to turn that flank. We've got to move up. I mean, Wartenberg's moved up. He's got to move up with him. These two units, these three units here, need to move. Okay, France has done a great job. They've defeated Prussia utterly. A 
to do well. Now I'm trying to move on Russia. Wombberg is advancing on him. And France already has this unit of Yurgiski anchored. And we're already being attacked by Grenadiers. Not sure why they're falling square though. Is there any cavalry nearby? Nope. And Rush is taking casualties as he's falling as he's falling back. These guys here. Looks like these two units can form pike formation. These other ones can form square. So Austria certainly not getting drop on them with their cavalry. And you see some resolve being instilled in Ryband here. He's moved up. Elb is also joining the party. Nice hits there from the Elba artillery. He's trying to take out their arty. Austrian troops are right in front of him. He's shooting him. Strange choice of target. Okay, that's better. Oh, point blank. Nicely done, Elb. They've pretty much destroyed the entire Red Team army here. Only Russia really remains. Austria has a bunch of elite cavalry still remaining here. Where have they been all this time? Careful, Russia. You're shooting your own men there. Works form pike formation. All right, looks like Robin, Elb, and Wartenberg are just sort of cleaning up house here. Then they'll move on the rest. I never imagined I'd see Delb at the end of the battle. Just taking up defensive positions. The only way away for France and Wartenberg, Ryben, Elb to win this battle is to literally just charge in bayonet. Got some dragoons here charging on an unsuspecting. Oh no, they're not unsuspecting. It was a trap. Oh, they've almost got him. I got him. 
Here come the killer today. Nice volley there from the French. What is the French up to here? Wartenberg's trying to enter the town. Yeah, they got they got Russia here outnumbered. Oh, one unit here broke. Yeah, so it's, it, it looked like at first Wartenberg had this in the bag. I should probably have him worried there for a little while. Yeah, here comes French. He's swiping behind the barricade there. I saw a lot of odds. They really captured the building behind them. Now they're shooting the Russian general point blank from the house. Okay, we've got one more unit left on the field. That's it. Guys are gonna break any second. All right, that's it. We are finished. All right, victory! So well done to Templar Valentino, 856 fun balls, 1,449 Anzac Warspite, 1,195 Latour, 1522 Bourbon. 773, Osti, 823, Renvert, Renard, or I don't know how you say that one, 482, and Renf Holt, 1038. Okay, kill counts here range from 162, Calvary, ranging all the way down to 1 for the General. So scroll back up, give you guys a brief look at these units and their performances there. The Calvary did very well, uh, Clemens also, 106. And this unit of infantry, lab infantry, I love the lab infantry arriving, great unit, 126, and yeah, 135, 162 there for the cavalry, Prince Albic, and that is that. So thank you to Anzac for sending me the replay, if you guys will see your own replay for each video on this channel, once again guys, my email, scouts2entertainment at gmail.com, you can send replays directly to me via private messages on Discord, you can join my Discord server, Scouts Reconnaissance, and post it there, or tag me in any NTW3 replay you post on the NTW3 Discord as well. This is Mika from Scouts and Entertainment signing off. Goodbye, my fellow Scout Troopers. Catch you in the next Total War battle.